Disney and Universal have created awesome parks, but they are not the only ones. There is a world of theme parks outside Disney or Universal. Let's take a look at some parks outside of Disney and Universal. First off in this list is Phantasialand in Germany. This is an awesome park that offers world-class theming. From steampunk to Mexico to Tarot, one of the best coasters in the world, the park offers a diverse range of things that will appeal to everyone, I think. One of the coolest looking coasters in the park is Fly, a modern flying coaster with beautiful theming that reminds me of Super Nintendo World. The park also offers on-site hotels that are an experience of their own. Other than Fly, there is Tarot and Black Mamba, and a top spin that looks awesome. A minor criticism is that some of the park attractions are a bit dated and could use some renovation like crazy bats. Next up on our list is Europa Park in Germany as well, but this time is closer to France. Europa Park opened in 1975 and is a showcase for Mach rides that works with Disney and Universal. The park, as the name indicates, is themed to European countries. The most impressive areas are Switzerland, Scandinavia, Germany, France, Italy and Iceland with this wooden coaster that's not Mack Rides. Funny how the best coaster in the park is not made by Mack Rides. The park's collection of flat rides is also incredible. They basically have rides wherever they could fit them. You turn a corner and boom, flat ride. It's one of those parks you can't do in a day. That's why they have on-site hotels and also a water park called Hulantica. The park will also be adding a Croatia area real soon. However, the downside of the park is its many Disney copycat attractions like Euroset and Universe of Energy, which have been rethemed to distance itself from the Disney counterparts. However, there are still some uh, weird rides like this Haunted Mansion and Piccolo Mundo, which is basically it's a small world, but they have a roller coaster restaurant, guys, so I guess it's forsaken. Another great park in Europe is Legoland Biland. This is the perfect park for family and Lego fans with rides based on many LEGO themes. However, what makes Legoland Biland great is the sheer number of attractions, from Polar Explorer to Flying Eagle, rides unique to this Legoland. They have this crazy Kuka arm ride similar to some of our trims at Epcot, if you remember that. Also, if you visit Binland, I recommend going to the LEGO house to get even more LEGO fun. Now let's move on over to America, for not Berry Farm. This park has a great history. They started as an actual farm, but when their chicken restaurant got too popular, over time they built a ghost town, as you do of course, and ever since not has been entertaining generations. Many Disney fans will appreciate the log flume of this park and calico mine trains that are worth the price of admission by themselves. The ghost town area is a street atmosphere's enthusiast paradise. The park is also known for the roller coaster, including the world famous Ghost Rider and Accelerator, if that thing ever reopens. However, the park's downside has got to be its boardwalk area, as it doesn't really live up to the rest of the park, and their water park is also kind of mediocre. But they have a Camp Snoop area with the famous Beagle himself. They are, however, renovating the Fiesta Village area. Another great park in the United States is Dollywood. Yes, that Dolly. No, not that Dolly. Sorry, Tony Baxter. The park offers a great atmosphere, being located near the Great Smoky Mountains. While you're there, don't forget to grab the iconic cinnamon bread. The park offers great theme, so much so that even someone that's not a big fan of Dolly like myself will enjoy this park. I guess even train enthusiasts will enjoy this park. This park has a very complicated history. They didn't start as Dollywood, but their main focus for a long time was the railway. The park offers the following major attractions, lightning rod, an armacy crazy machine, and a favorite of coaster enthusiasts, Tennessee Tornado, a classic arrow looper, Wild Eagle, a B&M wing coaster that's sure to entertain many, Mystery Mine, a coaster I guess that exists, and the Fire Chase Express, a perfect coaster for family. The park will also be adding a new coaster really soon, 
that's similar to Fire Chase Express. However, the park needs a major dark ride, hopefully they'll get something someday. However, I don't know exactly what type of dark ride to give to a park theme to Dolly. Is it gonna be like a disco machine? I don't know. Now guys, these videos take a lot of work to make, so if you please click that subscribe button, it would really help me guys, okay? Be aware that I can't include everything park in the world here, these are my opinions, of course you have your own, be sure to comment them down below. Next up is Beto Carreiro World, located in Brazil. This is quite an obscure park, theme to a Brazilian cowboy of the same name. The park wasn't much when it opened, but it has grown so much. They have a Madagascar themed area for now, and they are open opening a nerf area really soon. However, this park needs better coaster because their top tiers are just old Vekomas. Now, moving over to Africa, we have Gold Reef City. In Johannesburg, there is a historic trip to the trials of South African mining, but the park also features some insane coasters like Anaconda and Tower of Terror. No, not that Tower of Terror, it's a roller coaster. It offers some crazy high G-Force experience, not related to Disney again. Now, let's move over to Asia with Ferrari World. From the world's fastest coaster to what might be the future of roller coasters, this park is more than the dreams of Ferrari fans, as it features immersive car-focused experiences. This park made this video because of their new ride, Ferrari Mission, a 5D coaster experience. This is an awesome coaster that I'm not gonna to spoil, but it's going to change the future of roller coasters, I think. Imagine if Universal had something like this, but with Back to the Future, the ride, guys. Can you please make this Universal, if you're watching this? Also in Abu Dhabi, is Warner Bros. World. It's an indoor theme park with immersive lands from Looney Tunes to DC Comics and even some Hanna-Barbera characters. It's great seeing a movie park being built in the current times and having such a successful appearance compared to other movie parks. They have a Tom and Jerry Wild Mouse, Flintstones Log Flume and many Looney Tunes attractions. The park's DC lands also look pretty impressive, however, the park lacks that major attraction, their Rise of the Resistance, their Pirates in Batavia, their Pirates of the Caribbean, their Indiana Jones, etc, etc. Now, let's move over to Sky Worlds, basically Gantings in Sky World. This was originally going to be a 20th century Fox Park, but when Disney bought Fox, things got complicated and I'm not a lawyer so I don't understand really what happened and they had to rebrand. Gantings is one of those casino brands and they have this big resort right next to the park. Some rides are themed to Fox movie like Rio and Ice Age. The Rio area looks really cool, as a Brazilian I really appreciate the architecture. They also have a robots area, does anyone remember that movie? There's also this awesome motorbike adventure that was supposed to be themed to Sons of Anarchy, does anyone? Remember that? There's also Epic World. No, not Epic Universe. Epic World, that's different. They're also gonna be opening another 5D coaster someday. So, if you are visiting Malaysia, you should definitely consider visiting this. Next up is Warner Bros. Movie World Australia, another one of Brothers theme park. This one features some major roller coasters like DC Rivals and they will soon have an Ozland. That's why this park made on this list. The park opened in 1991, but it features some really cool attractions like Scooby-Doo Coaster and Wild West Falls. But the park still has a long way to improve, specifically with the DC area. Going back to Europe, we have the Efteling. One of the things that sets Efteling apart from other theme parks is its focus on storytelling. The park's attractions are not just rides, but they are experiences that transport you into a different world. One of the park's newest coasters is Baron 1898, a dive coaster like no other, as it makes you on a thrilling journey to an abandoned mine, complete with special effects and storytelling that immerses you in the experience. Also, don't forget to visit Enchanted Forest, this is one of the most iconic areas from the park. They also have amazing dark rides like Fota Morgana. This is one of those parks where the focus is not on the roller coaster but on those big dark rides. The downside to Afton is that the park can get really crowded, specifically during peak season. However, the park does a good job of managing the crowds and the long times for the rides are worth it. Overall, I highly recommend a visit to Afton for anyone looking for a truly cool theme park experience. It's a must visit destination for any theme park enthusiasts 
and families looking for have an unforgettable experience. Next up we have Port Aventura. I visited this park last year and was blown away by the theming and attention to detail from a park that's not Disney. We have a Mediterranean area, Western area and a Polynesian area and even the Himalayas. The park has some really cool entertainment and an ok Sesame Street dark ride. Cookie! But the park's highlight are their coasters from Shambhala to Furios Baku and Dragon Khan. But for me, those weren't the things that I liked about the park, like Stampida for me was pretty rough, one of the worst rides I've ever been on. Hopefully they demolish it and replace it with something else. If you are visiting the park, I don't recommend getting the train, as it takes too long and you arrive after the park has already opened. And when you're going back, the train is full. Thankfully, when I visited, the park was empty in the afternoon. Another thing most modern parks need to improve is their app. And the ticketing system, it's really outdated and buggy. Hopefully they will figure that out. However, Recent rumors have suggested that Universal will be buying this park, Porta Ventura, and if you want more details on that, click this video on the screen right now.